This video is going to be having a look at the following dot point. Compare the structure of arteries, capillaries and veins in relation to their function. So there's two things that we need to do. Firstly, we need to compare the structure. So look at the uh, similarities and differences and relate these to the function of these three types of blood vessels. So what we, we've already had a look a little bit about blood, so now we're going to be looking at the vessels that contain them. So in humans, blood flows in an internal closed circulatory system. So you recall in the year 11 topics, we had a look at the difference between open and closed circulatory systems, and we see that there are several advantages of a closed circulatory system in comparison to an open one. So one is that we are able to have much higher blood pressure. So this allows the blood to move quicker around the body and obviously deliver, uh, in particular, glucose and oxygen for cellular respiration, as well as remove wastes. So it also allows blood to be more specialised for transport. So it allows for higher oxygen carrying capacity, which ties back to our last video on haemoglobin, and also for defence, which we'll be looking at in a lot more detail in the Search for Better Health unit when we look at the different types of white blood cells. So there are three main blood vessels in the human body, which are arteries, veins, and capillaries. So this table summarizes the three different types of vessels quite nicely. So the features that are listed there include things like carries blood, is the blood oxygenated or deoxygenated? How thick are the walls? Do they have elastic tissue? What is the size of the lumen? The lumen is the opening through which the blood passes. Uh, movement is provided by what is the pressure inside the vessel and are there valves present. So in arteries, the blood is carried away from the heart. So all of the blood in our arteries except for the pulmonary artery is oxygenated. So this is why we try to stay away from saying that oxygenated blood is only found in arteries because it can be found in one of our veins being the pulmonary vein. So we really... Uh, prefer to look at the fact that it is the blood being carried away from the heart. The walls of arteries are quite thick with a number of different layers. Uh, as we can see in this picture, we have a smooth outer layer, but then inside we have a thick muscular wall and an elastic layer, which helps um, the blood to pump through and ties into the movement through the vessel. So the size of the lumen is larger than capillaries, but when we have a look at veins, we will see that the lumen of the veins is bigger. The heart provides the movement of the blood through the um, arteries. With each pulse or each pumping contraction of the heart, the blood moves through the arteries. So our pulse that we feel is actually the blood moving through our arteries rather than our veins. The pressure inside our arteries is quite high, which is why if you ever cut an artery or you've seen in the movies where, you know, someone slashes someone's throat, which is a little bit gruesome, but we can see that spurting motion of the blood and that's because the blood is moving through uh, our arteries in high pressure. And lastly, there's no valves present in our blood because the force of the heart pumping the blood means that there's no chance of the blood flowing backwards. Now with our capillaries, these are our smallest blood vessels and their job is to carry blood to and from all of the cells and tissues within our body. So depending on the location of the capillary in the body, they can carry either oxygenated or deoxygenated blood. So if they're carrying blood to the cells, they're most likely carrying oxygenated blood. The capillaries then drop off the oxygen and therefore become deoxygenated as they move away from the cells. They have the thinnest of the three different types, the thinnest wall, sorry, of the three different types of vessels, and they're actually only one cell thick. So that allows for the easy diffusion of substances in and out of the capillaries and into the cells. There's no elastic tissue present, and lumen is extremely small. So as we can see from the diagram, it's only big enough to allow one red blood cell through at a time. Movement through our capillaries is also brought about by the pumping action of our heart, but because there's no mus muscle or elastic layer, the pressure inside these vessels depends on the location. So the closer to the heart, the greater the pressure, the further away from the heart, the less pressure there is inside these capillaries. 
And just like our arteries, there's no valves present. So lastly, with our veins, our veins job is to carry blood back to our heart. Uh, it is most, they mostly carry deoxygenated blood except for the pulmonary vein, which carries um, blood from the lungs to the heart, which has just picked up oxygen. The walls are much thinner than the arteries, but as we can see, they are quite thicker than the capillaries. There is no elastic tissue present, and the lumen is the greatest in size in uh, comparison to the other two. So we have this nice big opening to allow the blood to flow through. Unlike the arteries and capillaries, the movement of the blood through the veins is brought about by the contraction of the muscles that surround the vessels. It's because of this that the pressure within the vessels or in the veins in particular, sorry, is much lower than the arteries. And it's also this reason why the veins have valves. Because there is no pumping mechanism that is forcing the blood in the one direction, the veins have the valves in order to stop the blood from flowing the wrong way. So in particular, in our legs and in our arms, or mostly we see this in our legs, uh, if the valves aren't working properly, the blood could pull in our extremities, so in particular our feet. And people who have faulty veins or faulty uh, valves in their veins end up with problems known as varicose veins where they have um, sort of a pooling of blood in that area and they're not very nice. So that brings us to the end of this video. So we've looked at the different the differences in each of these different features and we've and we've talked a little bit about how those different features relate to their function and we'll be having a bit more of a discussion about this in class. So thank you.